I accidentally sent a message to my junior female classmate, changing I want to sleep with tranquility to I want to sleep with you. Two minutes later, my junior replied, today, can you wait for me for an hour? I will come to find you soon after I come back. Two hours later, I was blocked by Willow downstairs in the dormitory. Looking at my messy clothes and suspicious marks on my neck, she said with red eyes and grievances, are you seeing someone behind my back? I just returned to the dormitory and was chatting with my junior on WeChat. The last message she sent asked, are you busy tonight? At this moment, I just stayed up late doing experiments, my eyes were blurry, and I blindly typed a sentence after a rough look, I want to sleep with tranquility. I didn't realize that I had changed I want to sleep with tranquility, to I want to sleep with you. After sending the message, my eyelids were already unable to hold up, and I fell asleep without hearing the ringing of the phone. At this time, Willow's face on the exam site was so read it looked like a tomato. She carefully sent a message to test. What? Did you send it wrong? Seeing that the other party did not reply, she was afraid that the other party would regret it and send several messages in a row. Today, where to? Can you wait for me for an hour? I will come to find you soon after I come back. At the last moment of entering the exam room, she was still staring at the phone, afraid of missing a message. I'm going to enter the exam room now. You must wait for me. George, wake out. Manuel's loud shout woke me up. I hummed slowly stretched, and it was really comfortable after a long night of staying up late. The first sleep always gives a thorough release. I picked up the phone next to me with my eyes closed, not in a hurry to see the content. First reply. Junior, I slept so comfortably today. Manuel urged impatiently. George, hurry up. The cafeteria's beef noodle soup is by one get one free for the first 50 people. What? I woke up instantly, using my hands and feet to climb out of bed. The beef noodle soup in the cafeteria is famously delicious, with a rich soup and an incomparably delicious taste. The only drawback is that it's too expensive. How could I miss this rare opportunity of buy one get one free? I quickly washed my face with water, picked up my phone and it was actually turned off. I threw my phone away and sprinted downstairs with Manuel. Hey, 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 are you sure you don't want to change your clothes? Your neck has several red marks from mosquito bites. If you don't know, you'd think you did something bad. I scratched my neck. It doesn't matter. I'll go buy some mosquito repellent after eating. I was so focused on running that I didn't even look at the road and ran straight into a soft embrace. I was startled and quickly held up the person opposite. I carefully asked, are you okay? Looking carefully, it was Willow. I said, Junior, what a coincidence. Willow's gaze swept over my face and fell on the marks on my neck, her pupils slightly contracted, and she said, Have you slept already? I gave her a smile and said, Yes, and I slept very comfortably. Willow first looked incredulous, then slowly said with a bit of grievance, George, are you going out with someone behind my back? Oh no, I just remembered that I had arranged with Willow yesterday to have dinner together today. Now going to eat with Manuel is indeed not very kind. But now the situation is really urgent, I can't delay any longer, so I said, I'm really sorry, but I'm in a hurry. Willow's eyes were red, and she smiled bitterly at the corner of her mouth. George, how hurried are you that you can't even wait for an hour? I didn't understand why she was so aggrieved just because I missed a meal. So I patted her on the shoulder, sighed and said, Junior, next time, I will prioritize being with you. Willow looked incredulous and asked, Am I your plan B? I was speechless. This junior was becoming more and more unreasonable. If it wasn't for the buy one get one free, wouldn't I be willing to take her with me? So I added, I also considered whether to include you, but the situation forced me. She blushed and couldn't speak for a long time. Suddenly, I had an idea. If she called another friend to go with her, wouldn't it be two for the price of one? I asked tentatively, or you can call your best friend too. She frowned and insulted me, calling me a pervert, and walked away at a trot. I scratched my head, sighing. Girls' minds are really hard to guess. Forget it. Forget it. What's more important than beef noodle soup? Manuel and I ran towards the cafeteria. George, you're really something, giving up even a date with your junior. Manuel stared at me with a look of disappointment. I was eating the noodles or replying, isn't it all for this bowl of noodles? Hurry up and eat. Then go and appease your junior. After all, 
It's not right for you to break your promise. I scratched my head sheepishly. I thought about the first time I met Willow. It was a sunny afternoon, and our club organized us to go to the countryside for team building. That day, Willow was standing in front of the big pot, in the smoke, her figure was slim and slender, and her facial features were delicate and three-dimensional. A gust of wind blew, a scent of iron pot stewed goose filled the air, and quietly slipped into my heart. I stood in the distance looking at her, my heart suddenly missed a beat. The world seemed to be quiet, Willow like this made my heart flutter. I didn't expect that such a small junior could burst out such a big energy. She must be professional, so she could make such a delicious goose. I swallowed, and then I knew I had decided to pursue her. Manuel listened to my words. The corner of his mouth twitched slightly. I continued. You don't know. That day Junior actually gave me one of the only to goose legs. This must be the taste of youth. After that day, I added Junior's WeChat. Found various excuses to chat with her every day sent her good morning and good night messages, brushed her moments of WeChat every day, and asked her when she would make Iron Pot stewed goose again. Manuel couldn't help but roll his eyes at me. George, do you like the goose or the junior? I pondered for a long time, Man said. I like the goose made by junior, and also like the junior who can make goose. Manuel shook his head at the beef noodles in front of him. Why don't you just become the junior's goose? I was speechless. Suddenly, Manuel patted me and signaled me to look behind me. I was shocked when I saw it. A junior was showing off her food crazily, and there were four big bowls of noodles in front of her alone. The scene immediately stunned me. Manuel whispered to me, Freshman, Anna, just like you, a foodie, but she is big eater. A little internet celebrity, I nodded and remembered this unforgettable scene. After eating and drinking, Manuel and I happily returned to the dormitory. When I turned on the phone again, the message notification sound of the phone kept ringing. I opened it and saw that all the messages were from Junior's WeChat. Oh my god, this this this. I looked at the messages from the Junior one by one. And after seeing the message I sent by mistake, I felt like my brain was going to explode. Then I thought about what I said in the afternoon. Like an electric current piercing my eardrums, all I could hear was a buzzing sound. Oh my god, this is so awkward. Am I still alive? But thinking about her reply, I thought again, you know, this junior, she is quite sensible, so should I tell her that I sent the wrong message? I scratched my head, typed and deleted, hesitated for a long time and finally sent a message, junior, what do you mean? Willow's chat page has been showing that she is typing, until 10 minutes later. The other party sent a message that surprised me, sorry, it's not the original owner, the original owner sold the account to me, junior's account was hacked. Thinking of this, I was immediately filled with righteous indignation. I, George, hate account thieves in my life. I remember when I was in junior high school, my account was stolen. After it was stolen, the thief didn't steal information or defraud money, but just crazily sent explicit video to my acquaintances. The most outrageous thing was that he added their names to send messages before sending videos. I still remember several eye-catching contents. Professor Lee, I have a question I don't understand. I'll record it for you to see. Manuel, the latest anime, The Adventure of Sun Wukong's Golden Cudgel. Old Man Wan, take a look at this poor girl. Later, I became a legend in the class, and my face was swollen by my dad's slap. What annoys me the most is that to this day, every time I go home, Old Man Wan at the entrance of the community always asks me where to watch those poor girls, so I immediately shook off my cheeks, fired 40 curse voices rapidly like a gatling. After sending them, I immediately said, I will wait for you to curse back here. After saying the last sentence, I immediately blacklisted and left with one strike. I was delighted. I could already imagine the frustrated expression on the other side. However, on the other side of the screen, Willow, who had just listened to Gatling's rage, was about to explain that the next second she saw that she was blacklisted. At this moment, she was regretful. She shook her head helplessly, thinking, why did I mention the account theft? Now I'm crying without tears, and I'm scolded for dozens of messages. Late at night, all my roommates were asleep. Under the silent night sky, I was tossing and turning and couldn't sleep. Junior's account was hacked, so how am I going to explain and apologize to her? Thinking of this made me even more angry. All this blame on that damn account thief. The more I thought about it, the angrier I got. I turned around and punched the wall hard. It hurts, 
I groaned in pain and immediately started rubbing my hand. In the quiet dormitory, the sound of me rubbing my hands crazily echo. Manuel, who was on the upper bunk, knocked on the bedboard and whispered, No. Are you thinking about Junior? Then you should also pay attention to the impact. There are so many people. If you want to do it, keep it down. And you are too vigorous. I was speechless. Damn it. This was too awkward. My reputation. All this is because of that damn account thief. So I unblocked him, edited 40 messages of condolence to his relatives, copied and pasted them, and sent them crazily. Then, I immediately blocked him and left with one strike again. Very good. I feel comfortable. When people relax, the brain becomes much clearer. I remembered. Junior said, tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, she has a volleyball game. Then I go to cheer her on, send some delicious snacks, explain that thing, and then apologize and invite her to eat iron pot stewed big goose at night. Isn't this problem solved easily and effortlessly? I stretched lazily thinking about the iron pot stewed big goose the next day, and fell asleep beautifully. I muttered to myself, Hehe, <laughs> my big goose. Holding a large bag of snacks in the audience, I stretched my neck and easily saw Willow in the center of the court. She was wearing a white sports skirt with a high ponytail, and she seemed to glow on the volleyball court. Her bright eyes looked towards me, and with just one glance, my heart rate accelerated. I immediately responded with a brilliant smile, but she gave me a contemptuous look like seeing a jerk and turned her head arrogantly. It pissed me off. All this is because of that damn account thief. She was playing above and I was typing frantically below. This time, I had to argue with the account thief to get rid of my anger, but I waited for a long time and he didn't reply. Anyway, I was almost out of breath, so I blacklisted and left again. During the halftime break, I quickly took the snack bag and walked towards Willow. I only saw her pick up the phone from the bench and flip it a few times, and her face was filled with sorrow. Alas, it seems that her mood is really not very good. I must be careful not to touch her moldy head, when I explain later. Just then, a young-looking male student suddenly ran to Willow and said to her, Sister, drink some water. Damn it, where did this pretentious coquette wa come from? Calling her sister, I think he is not a good thing because he looks like a gigolo. Before Willow took the water, I immediately and sideways and blocked between them. Ignoring the expression of the bow, I handed the snack bag to Willow and said to her, Willow, I was wrong about the missed appointment yesterday. I was too anxious at the time. If I went late, I wouldn't be able to eat the beef noodles I was thinking about. I didn't mean to forget our agreement, and before I could finish explaining, Manuel suddenly rushed over like discovering a new world, pulled me and said, George, it's time to gossip. Look at that junior. I looked over following his finger, and it turned out to be the girl who ate for bowls of noodles alone that day, and she was being confessed by three bows on the other side of the court at this moment. So I said, the girl from yesterday, Manuel nodded repeatedly, with a look of admiration on his face. George, this girl is really amazing. I also hummed thoughtfully. With a bang, I turned my head back, the snacks hit the ground, and I saw a trace of hurt expression flashing on Willow's face. I was speechless, so I quickly retrieved the previous conversation. Damn it, what did I just say? I hurriedly explained. No, you misunderstood. We said she is amazing because she eats a lot. Willow's eyes were red, as if she was trying to hide something, she said. George, what do you really think of me? After that, she walked away angrily, and the junior bow followed her like a simp. I shook my head and decided to find another opportunity to explain. Lying in bed at night, I looked at the Big Goose Jr. in the blacklist and flipped through her chat records over and over again. It's all the fault of the account thief. If she hadn't stolen the account, I would have apologized to the junior last night. The more I thought about it, the more angry I got, and I pulled the person out of the blacklist again. Account thief. Come out, you can't see others doing well. You have hands and feet and don't do anything good. But you learn to steal accounts if it weren't for you. How could I not be able to contact my junior? I don't even have the opportunity to chat with her now. Whose account is not stolen, but you stole the juniors. The chat page has been showing that the other party is typing. I originally planned to scold the other party again, but the more I thought about it, the more useless I felt, and my tone gradually became wimpy. Dig brother, I beg you, give her account back to her. I really want to chat with her. Brother, 
What do you need to return the account? Seeing that the other party had not responded, I looked at the remaining balance of more than 300, gritted my teeth and transferred 200 to the other party. I only have so much. Please give the account back to the junior. Super invincible lightning account thief handsome guy. I beg you. Amidst my continuous praises, the account thief brother finally reply. I don't need the money. Is she very important to you? You actually spend money to redeem her account. Of course, she is very important in my mind. She is so important to you. Why did I hear that you are unclear with Anna? Brother, where did you hear this? These are all rumors. You don't need to care where I heard it. If you want me to return the account, you have to confess honestly. So I helplessly recounted the ins and outs of the matter from beginning to end. During the explanation, I suddenly remembered that damn lick dog Green T Jr., so I exaggeratedly scolded him. After speaking, the account thief replied, Okay, I'll return it immediately. I covered my mouth and secretly happy. I can finally chat with my junior again. This account thief is quite good. He is not angry at all after being scolded for so many days, and he doesn't want the money I gave him. It's really a thief with professional ethics. I'm a little embarrassed. At this time, Willow, who was replying to the message, thought of the misunderstandings these days and her own returned messages, and she blushed in the quilt. She thought, I really see everything dirty with a dirty heart. Since I pulled the juniors we chat out of the blacklist, we have not chatted. I don't know whether the account thief brother is unfaithful, or the junior has forgotten me. The next day, Manuel and I decided to go to the cafeteria 3 to try the newly launched sweet and sour ribs. After we got the meal, Manuel suddenly made a wink at me and said, There's a seat opposite your junior. Hurry up and sit over. As soon as I raised my head, I happened to look at Willow, and my heart was in a mess. Not good. I cleared my throat. You almost called her as your wife in the dormitory. What's wrong? Manuel pulled me to the junior. Junior, is anyone here? Willow shook her head, and I successfully sat opposite Willow. I saw it yesterday, but I don't know why the junior's eyes looking at me are empty. Junior, wasn't your account stolen some time ago? Have you got it back yet? The junior's friend asked with a puzzled look. Ah, when was your account stolen? Haven't you been passionately speaking in your moments of WeChat these days? Willow's face turned red. She glared at her roommate and affirmed through gritted teeth. Yes, it was stolen. The roommate had a look of realization. I knew it. That's why your account has been wildly scrolling through the screen and declaring a breakup on WeChat moments these days. I even suspected that you were taken over. Willow's ears and face turned red and she was said by her roommate. She quickly picked up the chicken leg in the plate and stuffed it into her roommate's mouth. Eat the chicken leg. Don't talk too much. I watched the scene in front of me with a dazed face. After dinner, it started to rain heavily outside. The rain pattered on the glass window and I saw Willow brought an umbrella and suddenly had an idea. I got up and put the dinner plate and casually grabbed a lucky girl. Coincidentally, it was Anno. I asked, Classmate, did you bring an umbrella? No, then mine is for you. I stuffed the umbrella into her arms and tiptoed towards the junior. Willow stood at the entrance of the cafeteria, looking at the rain outside, as if waiting for someone. Seeing me coming, she shyly cleared her throat. George, I didn't bring an umbrella. Can you accompany me? At this moment, I also said at the same time, Willow, I forgot to bring an umbrella. Can you accompany me back to the dormitory? Both of us were dumbfounded. I looked at Willow's bag, and I clearly saw a pink umbrella just now. Willow looked at my empty hand and was also very dumbfounded. We looked at each other in silence. I turned around intending to find the umbrella I had just given away, but it was too late, in the distance. The other party was holding my Ultraman umbrella and gradually moving away. Willow and I looked at each other, both showing regretful expressions. We're screwed now. Willow said, shall we sit down and chat? So I asked, Junior, how did you recover your account? Willow declined, maybe we shouldn't chat. Seeing the rain getting heavier and the canteen getting emptier, I took off my coat and volunteered. Willow, shall I take you to the dormitory first? I walked over to Willow, holding my coat over my head. Come closer, be careful not to get wet, I said softly. As she moved closer to me, I could smell the faint scent of flowers on her. I held up my coat, enveloping her completely, as if protecting her under my wings. Are you ready? She nodded, subconsciously tugging at the hem of my short sleeve. I don't know why, but I was a bit nervous. Let's go. 
I took a step. She followed closely. I could only feel the wind whistling past my ears and my heart beating faster. The rain was getting heavier. The coat blocked the light. I couldn't see the expression on her face, but I could clearly feel the warmth from her body. Am I too fast? I asked quietly. She replied in a low voice, you could be faster. I suddenly stumbled. What a suggestive phrase. She was startled by my action, thinking I was going to fall. So she wrapped her arms tightly around my waist. I stiffened slightly, instinctively holding my breath. I could hear my heart beating violently. I'm fine. I steadied myself, my hoarse voice filled with laughter. I'm glad you're okay. Willow breathed a sigh of relief. I was so close to her just now. She wouldn't have heard my heartbeat, would she? As she let go of me, I breathed a sigh of relief, only for her to press against my chest again the next second. Feeling the heat radiating from her, my heartbeat grew stronger with each beat. George, your heart is beating so fast. She looked up at me. Our eyes met. Rain washed over her lashes, casting delicate shadows on her eyelids. There was a flash in my eyes. My throat bobbed. My voice hoarse. Junior, you heard wrong. Let's go. After sending her to the dormitory, I returned to the my dormitory in a daze. My hand involuntarily went to my chest. Damn, my heart really is beating fast. Back in the dorm, the more I thought about it, the more something seemed off. Why did Willow suddenly do a complete 180 on her attitude towards me? This isn't normal. In her eyes, I should be a jerk. In an instant, it dawned on me. Could she have staged the account theft herself? So she was relieved after hearing my explanation. This is the correct answer to everything. But being involved, I was confused, so I told Manuel about the account theft and my analysis. Manuel looked at me, as if I was an idiot. I feel like you're the type who's been sold as a slave, worked for over 10 years, and when you're rescued, you slap your forehead and realize you've been sold. Although I was dissatisfied, I had to agree with him. While we were talking, I suddenly received a message from Willow. George, the club is organizing a camping trip to the mountains this weekend. Do you want to come? Let's go. I agreed without a second thought. This would be a good opportunity to clear things up. Manuel patted my shoulder and said solemnly, Take your coat. If Willow gets cold you can put it on her. And also take snacks. Opportunities are for those who are prepared. I nodded heavily and started packing. The weekend was sunny. Everything was ready. This time I, George, was going to reclaim everything that belonged to me. Hey, George. Someone patted my shoulder. I turned around, and the girl in front of me had a sweet smile. It was the girl who ate for bowls of rice noodles. Hi, nice to see you again. I greeted her with a smile. Hello, my name is Anna. She smiled sweetly. I nodded perfunctorily, occasionally turning my head to look for Willow. Um, Anna tugged at my sleeve. Hum, well, I came in a hurry today. And then, Anna's face visibly reddened, and I noticed she was wearing a very short skirt her hands awkwardly pulling at the hem. I immediately understood. Looking at the coat in my bag with some hesitation, if I gave it to Anna, I would lose an opportunity to interact with Willow. But if I didn't help, she would definitely have a wardrobe malfunction later. Thinking about this, I hesitated for a moment, but still handed it to her. Thank you. Anna took the coat and tied it around her, giving me a grateful smile. Willow was waving and calling me from afar. George, do you want to be in a group with me? I was delighted and about to walk over. But Anna pulled me from behind and said, George, I want to be in a group with you too. George, don't you want to eat goose? Willow called me again. And all eyes were on us. Anna was not to be outdone and immediately came over and said, George, I can make you roast chicken. Willow walked over with a dissatisfied look on her face, grabbed my hand and said, George loves iron pot stewed goose. Anna pouted and said, tastes can change. How long has it been since you stewed goose for George? How do you know his taste hasn't changed? I was sandwiched it in the middle, feeling extremely awkward under the gaze of everyone around. They were still arguing incessantly, so I said, in a panic, let's all be in a group together. There's no rule that it has to be two people per group. Both of them shouted at the same time, George. Just when the scene was already very awkward, a voice like a clothespin came from a distance. Sister, I want to be in a group with you too. I felt like vomiting on the spot when I heard his voice. This guy really doesn't give up. He's always pestering Willow. Doesn't he have any shame? But at this moment, with so many people watching, 
I really didn't want to make the scene more awkward, so I gritted my teeth and said, Let's all be in a group, the more the merrier. So the four of us walked together under the strange gazes of others. I was distracted the whole time, with Anna and Willa walking in front of me, occasionally turning back to talk to me. I walked silently behind them with that pretentious coquette, not saying a word. One moment, Willow handed me a bottle of water and said, George, are you thirsty? The next moment, Anna took out McCarran's and asked me, George, are you hungry? There was a steep section on the way up the mountain. Some of the woes climbed up first and then pulled the others up one by one. I climbed up first, and when I was about to turn back to pull someone up, I saw Willow and Anna both reaching out their hands. Both of them looked at me with a competitive look. The air suddenly became quiet, but in an instant, before I could react, that pretentious coquette stood in front of me. I thought he was going to pull Willow up, but he reached out and grabbed Anna without a word, pulling her up. Anna tried to resist, but she couldn't hold on for even a second, and he lifted her up as easily as if he was picking up a little chick. I was surprised, this pretty bow didn't look like much, but he sure was strong. After I pulled Willow up, I saw Anna staring angrily at that bull, as if she wanted to glare holes into him, but he didn't even look at her, he just continued climbing. However, when he walked past me, a disdainful sound clearly reached my ears. I was actually being looked down upon by a simp, little bow, weakling child, just as I was about to catch up to him and ask him what he meant. Anna suddenly reached out and grabbed the bag in my hand, saying, You're carrying so much stuff, you must be tired. Let me help you carry some. Upon hearing this, the previously smug Willow immediately reached out and grabbed the other corner of the bag, saying, Yes, yes, let me help you carry some too. Neither of them was willing to let go, and they wrestled on the spot. I was about to stop them. When I heard a snap, the bag broke in response, and all the things I brought rolled down the hill. Ah, my roasted chicken. Ah, my delicacy duck neck. Ah, my favorite spicy beef jerky. How could you all abandon me? I glared angrily at the two ancestors in front of me, that they just casually turned their heads to the sides. I'm really fed up with them. Silence. Everything was silent. The four of us walked on the mountain road, ignoring each other. And I was heartbroken, crying out in my heart. If I did something wrong, please let the heavens punish me, not let me watch my spicy beef jerky rolling down the mountain. After a while, seeing that I was not speaking, Anna said a bit embarrassed, It's okay George, do you like roast chicken? I'm good at roasting chicken, I'll roast it for you when we get there. Caring about food, I immediately perked out and swallowed hard. Unexpectedly, Willow's expression changed, she coughed lightly, a pair of killer eyes staring straight at me, and also interjected, I specially prepared a big goose, you should eat my stewed goose later. It's over, at this rate, I probably won't even get to drink soup who understands, my family. After we arrived at the campsite, Willow told me secretly, George, let's go, collect some firewood. I put down my bag and was about to follow her, but Anna stopped me and asked, George, where are you going? Willow replied, I'm going to collect some firewood with George, we'll be back soon. She tugged at my sleeve, and I immediately understood and said, we'll be back soon. Anna's gaze stayed on the hand Willow was pulling, her face changing. Willow and I collected a lot of firewood from afar. When we came back, she squatted down to set up the pot. She smiled and said, Last time you asked me why the goose I made was so delicious. Actually, the most important thing about stewing goose in a pot is the heat. You need to quickly sear the surface of the goose meat to a golden brown to lock in the juices. Then, turn to low heat to simmer slowly. This can make the meat more tender. Listening to her description, I couldn't help but swallow rolled up my sleeves and started plucking the goose feathers with her. As the goose feathers flew, my heart was also flying, this might be what they call damn romance. The two of us worked hard for a long time and finally stewed the goose. After everything was done, we sat on the ground panting. We served a bowl, and a rich aroma permeated. I couldn't wait to tear off a piece and put it in my mouth. The goose meat was very fat and juicy, the meat juice was very tender and smooth, and the aroma was overflowing. It was really delicious, is it good? Willow looked at me expectantly. I nodded, it's so delicious, as long as you like it. Willow immediately breathed a sigh of relief, her hair was messy on her forehead. The sunlight fell on her face, a little dazzling. How was it? Did you have fun? I nodded. 
She suddenly pointed to my face. Your face is dirty. I took my sleeve and rubbed it hard. As I was rubbing, Willa laughed. She held back her laughter and grabbed my hand. Don't rub it. You'll become a coal ball. Don't move. Willa's face suddenly magnified in front of me. Her eyes serious. Her face was soft. My body stiffened. My eyes widened and stared at the close-up face. My mind was blank. I didn't know how to react next. Ton. Willow smiled brightly. Thank you. I quickly lowered my head to avoid her gaze. If time could freeze at this moment, it would be great. There is an endless goose to eat, and Willow to watch. What more could I ask for? I had just returned to the tent and hadn't had time to rest. When I heard someone calling me outside. George. I poked my head out and saw Anna holding a bag of roast chicken. She looked sad, but still offered it to me like a treasure. I know you might have eaten and are not hungry, but this is what I made for you after you left just now. If you get hungry again at night, you can still try it. My roast chicken is really good. It might not lose to the stewed goose, even though it was wrapped layer by layer. I could still smell the penetrating aroma of the roast chicken. I licked my lips and thought, hungry again at night? No. I'll go into the tent and eat it immediately. Thinking of this, I couldn't wait for a second. I quickly said thank you took it eagerly, and planned to return to the tent. I saw Anna tilting her head, pointing to the sky, and saying, Do you want to go see the stars together? The stars here are very beautiful. I looked at her, then at the roast chicken in my hand, which was still warm. I was torn. But no matter what, I should make things clear with Anna, so I calmed my mind and chanted, In ancient times Guan Yu slaying Hua Shang while the wine remains warm. Today I... George, will refuse Anna while the chicken remains warm, it's not too late, so I agreed to her. As I walked out with Anna, the two of them were unaware that they were being followed by a slender figure behind them. The higher we went, the brighter the stars in the sky. Anna excitedly pointed to the sky. George, look, the Big Dipper. I looked in the direction Anna was pointing, and indeed found several bright stars in the sky. They were arranged in the sky, emitting a dark, bright, gentle glow. This is really the first time I've seen the Big Dipper so close. Anna found a clean stone and pulled me to sit down with her. George, actually I asked you out because I have something to say to you. Anna hesitated for a while, seemed to muster up the courage, looked into my eyes, and said seriously. George, I like you. I stared at her in surprise. I didn't expect her to be so direct. Anna's face was as red as a tomato. She didn't dare to look into my eyes, her hands kept pulling at her skirt. She was nervous and expectant. I know we've only known each other for a short time, but I really like you. I hope you can give me a chance. Just as I was about to refuse her, a voice suddenly sounded behind me. Wait, it was Willow. She noticed that I was looking at her. Her eyes were a little evasive, and her face was unnaturally ray. Well, it's a coincidence that I bumped into you here. Don't misunderstand. I just happened to pass by, accidentally hurt, absolutely did not mean to disturb. The more Willow spoke, the redder her ears became. Willow, George and I still have something to talk about, can you leave? And unceremoniously drove her away. I'll just stay here and won't disturb you, you don't mind, do you? Willow looked at me tentatively. Anna frowned slightly. Willow, I will be embarrassed if you are here. Well, I have something to talk to George, can I talk first? Willow came closer. She took my hand as if wanting to lead me away. Willow, everything has its order. Can you wait for me to finish? Anna quickly grabbed my other hand. Seeing the atmosphere was a bit off, I was pulled by the two of them. I couldn't walk or stop, and I couldn't even get a word in. Willow was not at all weak. If you talk about the order, I like George first. Are you afraid that I will take George away and affect you? Anna was not weak either. Willow, where were you earlier? You are cutting in when someone is confessing. Willow sneered. Are you teaching me what to do? I'll confess whenever I want. What's it to you? If you're upset you can leave first. The two of them were on the verge of a fight, and I hurriedly stopped them. Wait. Both of you shut up. Willow. I have something to say to Anna. Can you leave? Do I have to leave? I nodded. A trace of loss flashed in Willow's eyes, but she obediently turned around and moved slowly. Looking back three times with every step, after she was out of sight, I was about to speak. Anna spoke first. If you like her, just say it. Don't beat around the bush. I asked in confusion. How did you figure it out? She smiled and said. Do you remember the day we met? I nodded vigorously. 
The scene was indeed impressive, so I said, Of course, that day you ate for big bowls of noodles. Yes, that day, when you said you liked the junior who could make goose, and also liked the goose made by the junior. I knew what you were thinking. Actually, I've always been wishful thinking. Thinking maybe you would be willing to change your taste. But today, I found out that you ultimately chose the goose. I nodded and said, Yes, I was really hungry. Anna laughed, seemingly not surprised by my answer. I understand. Then take care of yourself. If someone who doesn't know any better upsets you, come find me. I'll always have roast chicken ready for you. She raised her voice on purpose when she said this and glanced at the bushes not far away. I'll go first. I guess someone has something to find you. After Anna left, Willow crawled out of the bushes behind her. Smiling like a cat that got the cream, she explained with a red face. I swear, I absolutely wasn't eavesdropping. Willow, were you serious when you said you liked me just now? Willow nodded seriously. Of course, I frowned and said, Junior, although I also like you, but can you open your mouth and explain some things? Willow was taken aback by what I said. What do you mean? What do you think? What's the deal with that simp coquette? He's like a leech, really. If it wasn't for the crowd today, I would have wanted to beat him up a long time ago, calling you sister all the time. Doesn't he have any shame? He's really lost all men's face, Willow said with a full head of black lines. But he's my brother. I was shocked and said subconsciously, your brother. The smile at the corner of Willow's mouth was almost unbearable. Yes, my brother, my real brother, he just told me that without his help, you would have stood there like a fool. I didn't expect you to think of him like this. My mind is now a mess. Oh no, how could he, with that cheap look, be Willow's brother? It's too embarrassing. I just want to dig a hole and crawl in. Willow's gaze was too intense, making me a little overwhelmed. Willow moved a few points closer to me. Her little finger gently scratched my palm. The love in her eyes was about to overflow. George, you just said you like me. I cleared my throat and didn't deny it. So, Willow, your account wasn't stolen, was it? I tentatively asked. She blushed and nodded. Yes, I know everything you've done for me. George, I like you. I really, really like you. Would you like to be my boyfriend? Willow looked at me seriously, her obsidian-like eyes shining. I was so nervous that I almost forgot to breathe. The sound of my heartbeat kept drowning me. Willow waited patiently, looking at me nervously and expectantly. Confessions should not be made by girls, Junior. I like you. Would you? I carefully took out a flower from my pocket, and as soon as I took it out, the flower fell off. It's over. I accidentally sat on it just now. I was in a mess trying to put the flower back on. But the more flustered I got, the worse I did. I will. I will. Willow suddenly crashed into my arms. The familiar temperature and scent made my heart beat faster. I held her tightly, as if afraid of losing her. Willow, can I kiss? Before I could finish my sentence, Willow stood on her tiptoes and kissed my lips. Her lips were soft and sweet, like marshmallows, intoxicating. Looking down at her trembling eyelashes, like butterfly wings, beautiful and charming, I gradually lost myself in it. At that moment, I suddenly understood that love quote, the stars are in the sky, and you are in my heart. Manuel sent a message late at night. Surprise check, what are you doing? Kissing. Sorry to disturb, then you go on kissing. Wait, what? What kissing? George, whose lips are you kissing? Shut up. How did you quietly get the goddess? Okay. Okay. George, you've grown up. You better explain everything to me tomorrow, or you'll be expelled from the dorm. For the first time in love, I was so nervous that I couldn't sleep and chatted with my girl all night on my phone. That night I had a wet dream. And naturally, the dream was about Willow. She repeatedly called my name on the bed, and I kissed her forehead nose and lips over and over again, falling deep into it, unable to extricate myself. In the morning, I recalled the dream from the previous night. As soon as I stepped out of the tent, I saw Willow supporting her limping brother, walking towards me. He saw me and waved his hand. Hello, brother-in-law. Remembering all the times I had scolded him, I nodded awkwardly. Strangely enough, now seeing him, I found him quite adorable. So, I took the initiative to take her brother from Willow's hands, thinking I could become good friends with him. Unexpectedly, the two of us were too careless and ended up face planting on the way down the hill. After getting together with Willow, 
I recalled the message that caused the misunderstanding. I told Willow I wanted to sleep with her dot dot so. One day, I sent her a message. Baby, the previous message was sent by mistake. Now I want to make it come true. Okay, what do you mean? I mean, do you want to sleep with me? Yes, very much. When are you free on the weekend? What time do you want? All of it. Okay. Willow agreed quickly, but she had no idea about the capabilities of a young, vigorous college student. So that day, I was in high spirits, and Willow lost her voice. She weakly glared at me and made me swear. I swore I would dare to do it again next time. 